Hey y'all, welcome back. I'm Shayna Searcy and I'm so excited to paint with you today. So I know I've been missing for a few weeks online. I'm so sorry about that, but I'm back and ready to jump back in. We are going to be uh, starting with this lovely painting of a combination of echinacea or coneflowers and black eyed Susans. I had this odd shaped piece of paper that I had um, taken off an end of a much larger sheet that I was using for a commission that was a very specific size, leaving me with this kind of chunk on the end. So I said, what can I make with that? So I'm going to, uh, or I created this composition of Black Eyed Susans and Echinacea together. And we're gonna put in a background. These are great because they're very similar flowers and are painted very similarly, but have very different color palettes. And the yellow and the magentas are gonna look great next to each other and really pop and have that vibrant um, sap green for the stems that are really gonna bring it all together. So I am using my core palette over here um, and the colors that I've pulled out with the exception of the only color that is not core is this opera pink. So I did pull out a little opera pink, which is a Daniel Smith color um, to get this brighter, vibrant pink. But you could definitely do this with all magenta, Quadacarone magenta. So I have Quadacarone magenta, sap green. I have... Um, a uh, Hansa yellow light, a Dyrolide yellow, which is a warm yellow, Payne's gray, and then I've mixed a bunch of them together to create a brown. So when we get to that point, we'll do that. We're gonna be mixing colors as well as we go along. All right, I have my water. I'm using a Princeton Aqua Elite size eight brush today. I got this brush somewhat recently. Um, haven't used it a lot in videos, but I'm gonna use it today. So you can see here, I have this nice composition of flowers drawn out. You can create any composition you want. These smaller ones with the smaller center are the Black Eyed Susans. So they're more of a rounded, smaller center. And then the ones with slightly droopier petals um, with the bigger cone in the middle, these are going to be our Echinacea. So very similar, but slightly different look and feel to the flowers. So. If you wanna just fill in your page with a couple of flowers that, and you don't have to even draw these at all. I drew these out so you can kind of see where I'm going. But oftentimes these flowers, I just paint straight from. Now we're gonna do the background last. You can definitely do the background first, but then you have to paint around your petals. We're gonna do it later on. We're just gonna put in a really loose, kind of light, watery background. All right, I'm gonna start with my Black Eyed Susans. I am going to pick up my Hansa Yellow Light. Let me make sure you can see this on here, which I think you can. I'm gonna water it down. Oh, sorry, my tray is there. Now it won't jiggle around too much. I'm gonna water it down because I do want kind of a light color. I'm gonna add layers onto it um, as we uh, build layers and texture. So I'm gonna start with this one down here and I'm just going to lightly and loosely paint in all of these petals. And if your paint runs out or you skip a few spots, that's fine. And again, if you haven't drawn these out and you just draw a circle and like paint around them with petals, that would work as well. So this is gonna look pretty flat and boring right now, that's fine. This one here also, even though the petals are kind of on their side, I find that the Black Eyed Susan petals are thinner. Um, when I look at lots of images of them, they tend to be thinner and a little bit more spread apart than the um, echinacea or the coneflower petals. Uh, let's see up here. And I am leaving some white spots in a few of them. Again, we're going to be building layers on, so those might disappear a little bit later on, but And this one here, I tried to vary them so some of them are kind of facing toward me, 
you know, you see all the petals around and some are kind of on their side. So we get foreshadowing and we don't quite see all the petals in the background there. All right. So yeah, this is coneflower, 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 coneflower. Mm, maybe I'll do, no, that's fine. Um, Yes, I'm just seeing, these are all gonna be pink here, so I feel like it might be heavy on this side with pink. Um, maybe I will turn, put one here, and I'm gonna turn this one into a Black Eyed Susan, even though it's kind of more drawn like a coneflower. I'm just gonna fix it with a little, there we go. Beautiful, so that's the first layer on there. Now I'm gonna go back with my Dyrolide Yellow, which is a slightly darker yellow, and I'm just gonna to start to put some of this in the center. Some of these might be a little dry already, that's okay, and some might still be wet, that's okay as well. And you can see I'm just taking the tip of my brush, it's darkest towards the center, and adding texture like where the little indents are on the petals but not making them too perfect these are loose but I do want this brighter yellow part to kind of still have a place I'm not covering all of it up And these are, that one's still super wet. So I'm gonna skip to this one while that one dries a little bit. But I'm really up on the tip of my brush, kind of sketching in this layer, being loose. I'm holding my brush a little further back so I don't have so much control. I'm not like super down here, okay? This one's still pretty wet too, but that's okay. And this one, and there. So you can start to see how they're taking shape a little bit. And we'll do a little bit more work on these in a little bit. But we're gonna let that dry, and we're gonna move on to our first layer of our echinacea or the cone flowers, those beautiful bright, bright pink flowers. All right, I'm gonna start with opera pink and water it way down. And this is gonna be my first layer of light, light pink. Opera pink just has a little bit more luminosity than our Quadacridone magenta, which tends to be a little bit cooler in a shade. Um, but again, if you really water down that magenta, you're gonna get a really light pink as well. Or you can even take the magenta and add a little bit of your white from your, if you have like a kit of watercolor and it'll give you kind of this paler, creamier white color or light color of pink. So these are all of my, this one is really big in here. Yeah, I wanted to have like a really big focal flower and with these you can see I'm leaving lots of like bits of white space in the stems or in the petals in the stems And this one I made much more turned towards us. So we see all the petals where usually as these are popping up, you really only see the side of these where the cone or the, the Black Eyed Susans, you know, you tend to see a lot more of the full face of them. They're a little springier, their petals, where these petals are really droopy. That whole cone kind of comes up in the center I'm assuming that's why they're called cone flowers. And then 
you really are seeing kind of the side view of the petals. And we are gonna add layers to these as well. All right, so now I have my first layer kind of all set. I'm gonna go into my magenta now. And I do still want this to be much lighter. So I'm gonna take some of that magenta. I'm just gonna drop a little bit of it around the center here. Again, you're gonna get some areas that are wet and some that are dry, that's okay. Same thing with these as with, oh, I picked up the opera pink. As with the, the yellow flower or Black Eyed Susan, we're not trying to cover up everything we've already done. We're just adding some layers to it. All right, and we're gonna not tr try not to get carried away. <laughs> it's hard, I know. So one or two areas, you can go all the way to the top, but some of these you're just gonna go halfway up, a quarter of the way up. Maybe do a little bit from the top down where there might be a shadow where some petals overlap. This one. There we go. Okay, so with that being done, while that's still a little damp, I'm gonna take my Dyrolide Yellow and my Opera Pink, and I'm gonna make a really bright orange. Okay, and that I'm gonna drop, I'm gonna water it down a little bit. I'm gonna drop right in the center of these beautiful cone flowers. And if it mixes with that pink a bit, like this one is definitely going to mix with that pink a little bit because it's still very wet. We love that. See? And the darker color towards the base and kind of lighter on top. Beautiful. Let those dry. Let them do their thing and bleed into each other. We will be back. And they're going to be messy. And you're going to be like, what is going on? It's going to be okay. It's going to be fun. It's going to be beautiful. We're going to go back into the Black Eyed Susans. So we have green and we have magenta. So magenta or green and red are opposite each other on the color wheel when we mix them together they will neutralize each other. And these two particular colors, because magenta has lots of, it's a very cool um, red color. It's got lots of blue in it. It's gonna help us make brown. So look at that beautiful brown that we've made. So we're gonna use brown, sorry, magenta. I just got all swept up in that. We're gonna use brown in the centers here, but don't worry. I know they're black eyed Susans. We're gonna put a layer of brown down. There. And then we're gonna add Payne's Gray to darken them. So, and this way they'll have just a little bit of an area of kind of a lighter color, give it a little dimension. So I'm gonna take some Payne's Gray, and you can even add it to your brown to get a super dark, kind of warm gray or black. And we're just gonna drop some of that in. This one is still very wet in spots, so. Okay. 
So we have a few areas of highlight. There we go. All right, while we still have this brown here and these folks are drying, they're still not quite dry, I'm gonna start to drop in at the base some of this dark, dark color. And we'll get to like fine texture later on, but. And everything should be looking a little bit of a hot mess. Right, I'm gonna rinse my brush off. I'm just gonna blend these together a little bit. I'm actually pushing some of this away from the center. And now I'm gonna start to play with my colors. So I'm gonna make some more orange. I'm gonna drop that in up here. And even like dropping in a little like straight pink. So looking at photos of these, like they have like a glowing orangish red center sometimes are cone flowers. They're like super vibrant in the middle. And then they're surrounded by all these little black um, kind of thistly things, but we'll get to that. So nice bright color there. And now we're gonna go back. Oh, I missed a one of these. Let me put some dark color in there. Here we go. All right, let's go back to Quadacridone Magenta. I'm gonna water it down. I'm gonna add a little Payne's Gray. And I'm gonna come back into here while these are still, like the centers are still a little wet, and I'm gonna start to define some of the petals. Especially towards the middle here. One here. Rinse off my brush. You can blend some of them out a bit. All right, those are looking great. And now we're also gonna go back to our Dyer Life Yellow. So I'm gonna water it down and I'm gonna start to define these even more, kind of popping up the yellow color, but leaving some highlights of those first layers that we put down. Try not to put my hand in my very wet cone flowers. Move up here. And if you reactivate a little bit of the center and you start to get a little bleeding from the black in the middle, that's totally fine. 
totally fine. And after you're done with this step, you're gonna let everything dry. All right, let's put our brushes down, let it all dry. And then we'll come back and start to add the final details to the blooms and our background and stems and leaves. All right, we're back and I'm gonna go jump right into um, our background and then we're gonna put our stems and leaves over that. So for the background, I'm just gonna use a little sap green I'm gonna water it like way down. So it's gonna be a really, really light color. And then I am just going to start kind of scrubbing this in and going around the flowers. Some areas I'm gonna go right up to the petal, other areas I'm gonna leave a little bit of a white kind of border. And again, I'm not doing like a perfect wash. It's so light, you shouldn't get too much, you know, streaking or anything like that. But um, you wanna work quickly so you're not leaving any spots that are like dry, that dry before you can kind of move on. And it's such a light color that even like when you get up to the edge of certain areas, it shouldn't really affect them too much. And I like doing it this way second for something like this um, because it doesn't restrict my, where I can put my petals. I kind of build in all the petals first and make kind of organic decisions there rather than painting around a drawing. And then once you paint it around it, those are kind of where your petals are. You can't make too many drastic changes after that. But I like the flowers are the star of the show, so I like to have the opportunity to kind of change up the placement of the petals and the flowers like as I'm working. Get a little more green. And you can drop in some areas if you want, like slightly darker color. We'll put in a little bit darker here. Cause this is like a blown out, out of focus, kind of bokeh, loose background. And we're gonna put the stems and leaves over top of this that are gonna be, you know, sharp and crisp and more, um, detailed than what's going on here. And that will kind of bring everything together. Making sure to go down in between some of the petals. And just kind of look around, make sure you don't forget any areas. It's okay if you leave some white spots, but I don't want to leave this whole side over here white. And then taking some of my green while this is all still damp, I am gonna drop in a few bits of like darker color, just more concentrated. And you could even add like a bluer green, like I have a little ultramarine here. Just tap it, Ooh, it's very dry. 
So this green is even a little kind of bluer. I just want to make sure I don't have any like harsh edges though. I don't really want that. I want kind of soft. Loose. There we go. Could even do a few little Take some of my yellow and just very watered down yellow and whoop, tap a few droplets in there. There we go. All right, now I'm gonna leave that. I have to let the background dry as well. Um, so you're gonna let that dry. While that's drying, I'm gonna work a little bit on these interior petals, but you can't really get too close to the background, but we'll work on the center of our cone flower. Um, I'm going to take this really dark brown that we made earlier. So that was Payne's gray with the magenta and the green mixed together to make brown. I'm just gonna water this down a little bit just to get a nice flow. Now you can use, I was using a size eight brush. I also have, let me pull this in here. I have this petite, Actually, maybe I'll use this one. This one's a little bigger. I have two um, petite round brushes. This one's a 20 out of zero. This one's 12 out of zero. So this one's super, super tiny. I'm going to use the 12 out of zero just so I can hold a little bit of paint. And I'm going to take this. Now, I love this color in here, but I'm going to start to add these little um, hairs or the little fine. They're kind of like hairs. Um, little bits of the cauliflower. And I'm not gonna cover the whole thing up. I will go up to the top and put like a few up there. Mostly concentrated kind of around the edge. And then they get thinner and a little bit more spread apart and lighter as we travel the cone. So you can do this with just a really tiny round brush or if you have one of these little petite brushes or even like a fine liner brush. I'm actually going to take some of my pink here with my black and make like a dark as we get towards the top here. All right, and I'm gonna do this on all of these. Do this one as well. And then our background, once we're done, if we take our time, our background should be dry. that we can put in our stems. The only problem with little brushes, like these little tiny petite ones, is that they do not hold a lot of paint. So you have to reload often. Take some of this pink again. All right, there we go, I'm happy with that. So, and my background is dry. I'm gonna go in with sap green, some nice concentrated sap green. You could even add a little Payne's gray to it to really darken it, give it a really nice rich color. I'm gonna look for the center of my, my flower, so right about here and kind of trace my way down for my stems. And depending on kind of which way 
the center is facing. So this one is kind of facing this way. So find like that center axis. And this one is more kind of this way. Let me go through. This one is center here. I'm also going to just bring some stems off the main stem. This one I made a little thick down here, but that's okay. And now we're going to add some leaves. So these leaves are long and thin. Vary the sizes a little bit. down here All right, and last but not least, I am going to just add a little bit darker color. I'm gonna take some of my Diorolide Yellow and a little Opera Pink, orange it up a little bit, add some water, and I'm just gonna come back to the center of my Black Eyed Susans. I'm gonna put a little of this darker color kind of around the edges here. All right, let's try this again. I've had so many interruptions today. People visiting my house. No one ever visits me. Okay, so like I was saying before, I'm putting um, this darker color kind of around the edge here, and then I'm using the tip of my brush, clean and mostly dry, to just pull color out from the center to create the texture this one dried a little bit while I had my visitor so I'm just gonna go with it And if there's anywhere else you want to kind of deepen or darken the color on anything, like this would be a great time to do it, whether it's on your Black Eyed Susans or even going back to any of your leaves or your cone flowers. We're meant to paint in layers in watercolors. So revisiting things to improve saturation or um, heighten contrast is all part of the process. It's not always one and done. All right, I think I'm good there. The only thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take some paints gray, find some brown that's kind of already on my palette, make a really deep dark brown, 
And I'm gonna go right along the edge of a few of these to just add one more pop of contrast. And it's gonna run into some of that area that was wet. I'm okay with that. And I just worked on This one is a, a little extreme, but that's okay. You ever find it bleeding in too much, you can just push it back in. I kind of like... I kind of like how contrasty that is and how kind of out of control that got. All right, I'm gonna leave it alone because I feel like I'm gonna play with it too much and then it's gonna get out of control. I'm gonna overwork it. All right, so there we have it. Once everything is completely dry, oops, sorry for the camera shake. We are going to pull off our tape You can always go back and reevaluate. You're trying not to overwork things, but the only thing like I've noticed on this one is I lost some of my separation of petals here. So if I wanted to, with like one more layer of um, quadacridone, like just put in a little separation of a few spots here, I can do that. And I don't even have to do all the areas, just a few little spots here. But other than that, I'm really happy with this. Oh, I love the centers of the cone flowers. I think that's my favorite part. Those really bright and vibrant centers. I usually paint them a lot more muted or darker. Um, but overall, this was a lot of fun. Thank you so much for joining me um, on this. If you are looking for the outline and don't wanna draw your own um, flowers, you don't have to. The outline is in the Studio Crew classroom. So any um, outlines that you might need, you can use, but you can definitely draw these flowers yourselves um, or just paint in the petals. So, all right, there we have it. If you have painted along, I hope you enjoyed this one. There's our cone flowers and Black Eyed Susans. We've taken our tape off and we have our final finished piece here um, straight out of the garden um, this time of year. Thank you so much for joining me. I'm Shana Searcy. Don't forget to like and subscribe. Check out the description of this video for links to supplies and materials that I used, as well as links to my social media and my studio crew classroom. All right, y'all take care and happy painting.